yours. Hello everyone, good morning, happy 11am on a Wednesday and welcome back to English Live Series 2 and the first live lesson of the week. So you might have noticed that at 11 o'clock on a Monday and a Tuesday I have been posting something from my back catalogue that's on YouTube. So if you are new to English Live uh, then there's going to be something exciting for you to do every Monday and Tuesday and if you came to them all last year then you can go back and revisit them. Uh, so Today we are doing some vocabulary, so we're going to try and stretch our vocabulary and learn some new words and practice using those words in sentences. But before we get on to that, a few shout outs. So Mummy English, as always, has been very busy in the live chat, making a note of all of the lovely shout outs you've been asking for and sending them over to me. <coughs> so now this takes my breath away having to go through this, this many shout outs. Here we are. Uh, shout out to Matt who is 13 and Martha who is 12 in London. Hello to Matt and Martha. Layla is unable to do it live, but she says hi. Hi Layla, I know you've got a really busy timetable from school, but it's lovely to know that you're, you're there anyway, saying hi. Uh, hello to Maya and Ava. Hello to uh, B Willis uh, in Devon, and it's her first lesson. I'm loving this, that we still have people coming in for, for lessons, for their first lessons. Brilliant. Hello to Harley, Millie and Poppy in Chesham. Hello to Ella, Lizzie and Jack, who are three best friends all doing the lesson today. Well, that's absolutely lovely. Welcome to you all. Hello to Izzy in Derbyshire. Uh, hello to Ollie in South Africa. Hi, Ollie. Lovely to see you. Hopefully, hopefully you got a chance to watch Grammar Getters uh, last night. Hello to Ben in Essex. Robbie says, good morning. Good morning, Robbie. You've got lovely manners. Hello to Amber, who is 11 in Kettering. Uh, Rhiannon, it's her second time. Well, Rhiannon, you must have enjoyed the last one because you've come back for another. Hello to Carson. Hello to Dolce, who is 10 in Ta Taunton. Charlotte in Bletchley, just down the road. Hello, Charlotte. Monty in Devon. And hi to Zach, who's written another poem. Zach, you're doing awesome. I think you're a poet in the making. And hi to Leo's friends, William and Yasmin. So hello to all of you and everybody else that's watching. And if you do want to have um, a shout out during the lesson, you can just pop it into the live chat. And um, Mummy English, my mum, who's about 40 miles away, is <laughs> sat in front of her computer, frantically typing them all into WhatsApp and sending them over to me so, um, so that I don't miss any important ones. Right, so um, I said we were going to be doing some vocabulary today and I'm not going to let you down. You're going to learn uh, five new words and um, hopefully really um, be able to use them confidently in your writing. So a quick start just to get us thinking about words and our favourite words. You've got one minute to write down or shout out at the screen or pop into the live chat. There's lots of different ways you can participate in these lessons. Uh, what's your favorite word and why? Okay, that's what I want to hear. I'll read some of them out from the live chat. You've got one minute, off you go. Play. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life is chasing you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life is believing in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. Listen, listen, Disestablishmentarianism. It's a great word, it's a long word. Ornithology and radium, excellent, that's from Zach and Holly. Uh, 
Well, Selena likes the word extravaganza because she said it in a school play. Uh, Amber loves the word happy because it gives her a good feeling. Oh, crescendo. Nice one, Lee. Pause. Okay, lovely to see so many of you sharing your favourite words and a full range as well of really long, complicated words, but also some really simple words that just uh, give us a good feeling or they sound nice when we say them or we like using them because, what they, because of what they mean. So the first word that I'm going to introduce to you today, you may already know this word, um, but we will be using it in combination with other words later in the lesson, is bravado. So even if you do know what the word bravado means, you might not be using it frequently in your vocabulary. So it's, it's quite a nice one to, to drop in. It's not too hard to say bravado. You can practice saying it. Hopefully there's no one around. You can say it as many times as you like. Uh, it's a noun and it means um, bold behavior intended to impress or intimidate someone. Um, and the example that I've used it in here is he exudes bravado. So exudes might be a new word for you as well. It means that you give off something. So he exudes bravado. Now, uh, those of you that have done vocabulary stretcher lessons with me before will know exactly what's coming next. You've got one minute to try and use this word in your own sentence. And um, I'll read some of them out from the chat. Good luck. Play. Ziggy the cat. <laughs> says my sister has bravado good use of the word bravado well done ah oh, well done harriet after telling the truth the boy had lost his bravado brilliant use of the word in that sentence Brilliant. Ah, Lola says, I can ride 10 horses, he said with bravado. Pause. Okay, some excellent use of the word bravado. Um, I noticed lots of you are using it in place of um, confidence and uh, it can be used in that way, absolutely, um, because if you've got that bold behavior, then that's that confident behavior, isn't it? So you can use it as a synonym for confidence. Well done for all of your efforts with that one. And I'm going to introduce another word to you now. And that word is travesty. So you may have heard of the word travesty before. You might not be entirely sure what travesty means or how you can use it in a sentence or um, if you wanted to pluralize it, it would be travesties with an I-E-S on the end. So it's a noun that means a false or absurd or distorted version of something or image of something or representation of something. And my example for you is the burglar's short sentence is a travesty of justice. Okay, so hopefully that has given you an indication of how you could use the word travesty. Um, I remember being a teenager and marching out of classrooms declaring it was a travesty that boys could wear any colour socks to school but girls in the school I went to had to wear black, grey or white socks. Um, 
And that was when I started using the word travesty. Uh, so let's see if you can use it in a sentence. Remember, if you are watching on catch up, you can pause and give yourself more time. Um, and you can also look for examples online to help you uh, create your own examples. Use these lessons in whichever way you can to help you do the best learning that you can. OK, good luck and off you go. Play. Hello, Lara and Leighton Buzzard. Mohit's coming out with great examples. It's a travesty that my dog gets so much attention whilst I have to work. Well done, Oscar. It's a travesty. I'm not allowed 20 goats. I think you should have 20 goats, Oscar. Have a word with your parents. I can see all the Harry Potter fans are back using um, Harry Potter as the theme for their example sentences. Well done. Lovely. So Holly says, great name, by the way. Holly says it was a travesty when women, when women could not vote. Brilliant. Okay, fab work. So we're two words in now. So we've looked at bravado, we've looked at travesty, and now I'm going to, oh, I'm a bit worried about this. This um, board stand is actually um, a lamp. <laughs> just, just make do here and make it as much like a classroom as I can. The next word that I'm going to introduce, it's quite a long one. So I've included at the bottom here how you can pronounce this word. It's infinite. Tesimal. It means extremely small. Um, and my example is an infinitesimal pause. You can practice saying it. I think you should. Okay. Even I get a bit tongue twisted with this particular word sometimes. So it's got a very simple meaning, but it sounds really complicated and it's bound to make your work sound um, much more expert or advanced. So see if you can uh, use it in a, in a longer sentence. You could just say, uh, my brain was infinitesimal, uh, but you could try and use it in something a bit more complicated and do practice saying it out loud. Okay, good luck. Play. Claire, an atom is infinitesimal. <laughs> There's some really nice, amusing examples in the live chat. If you are watching on Catch Up, don't forget you can just put your ideas in the comments and uh, you'll see other ideas that are popping into those comments too. Ella says her hamster, Hagrid, is infinitesimal. Brilliant work, everybody. Pause. Okay. Um, why don't you try with this particular word, seeing if you can integrate it into your daily vocabulary. Um, instead of saying small 
or little or any of those synonyms, try and use this word instead. So if you're asking, if you're being asked how much sugar you would like in your tea, you could say an infinitesimal amount. <laughs> See if you can catch your adults out. They might be a bit surprised that you're dropping in such uh, long and complicated sounding words. Right, let's move on to our next word, which is panacea. I really, really like using this word, um, but it's quite specific. So you need to have the right context, the right situation to be using it. So it means a solution or a remedy for all different difficulties and diseases. So there might be one thing that is your personal panacea. The example I've chosen is a cup of tea is the nation's panacea. It's not just the nation's panacea, it's also mine. Um, but other popular things are a fluffy bathrobe, a bar of chocolate, a cuddle with someone special, um, or I don't know, maybe you like settling down with a book to solve all of your difficulties and diseases. Um, let's see you use panacea in a sentence, okay? Let's see if you can put it in a sentence that you're likely to use over the next few days. Okay, good luck. Play. Don't forget you can practice saying it. Someone says, I missed your name. Uh, we need a panacea for COVID and climate change. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life is chasing you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life is believing in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because. Talking to your friends is a panacea. Lovely, Ella. Well done. Really nice. Lovely. Lachlan says, laughter is his personal panacea. I like that, personal panacea. I think I might use that, those two words together more often. Pause. Okay, lovely. So uh, I've just noticed I've had lots and lots of shout outs come through from Mummy English. So um, it's only fair that you get to hear them. So here we go. A big hello to Ella and Daisy in Liverpool. Thank you for tuning in today, ladies. Hello to Hang Yi in Kent. Hang Yi, you were in my grammar getters class last night. I hope you enjoyed it. Hello to Phoebe, who is 10 in Seven Oaks. Hello to Jack in Harlow. Hello to Lara, who is 10 in Leighton Buzzard. Hello again, Lara. Hello to Lizzie's mum. Her favourite word is wine. Uh, going back about seven months, that was my favourite word too. Uh, Joshua Jarry is 11. He's a long time term listener. Yes, he is. Hello, Joshua. Hello, Rania R uh, Razak, who is eight. Hello to Shiloh and to Ikra in Manchester. And hello to everybody um, who is here because they want to be, because they want to get better at English, which is a great thing. Or even if you're just here because you love English, just can't get enough of it, a bit like me. Okay, uh, let's move on to our final word before we start doing a few challenges. So our fin final word for today is fervid. Now, fervid might be a word you haven't heard before, um, but 
it doesn't have too complicated a meaning or too niche, too specific a meaning. So you should be able to incorporate it into your daily vocabulary. So fervid is an adjective and it means intensely enthusiastic or passionate, especially to an excessive degree. Now, I think I could probably describe my passion for um, for English as a fer a a fervid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll agree. Um, but how would you use it in a sentence? My example here is his fervid declaration of love. Okay, that would be a really over the top, exaggerated declaration of passionate love. How are you going to use it yourself in a sentence? You've got one minute. Off you go. Play. <laughs> is art. If you were to use the word fervid correctly, you would probably change that sentence to I have a fervid love of art. Because remember, it's an adjective. Fervid love of dance, well done. Nasir shares my passion, Nasir says my fervid love for English, yes. Hello Jack Taran. Oh lovely, Charlotte says my passion for learning is fervid. Actually Charlotte, I've worked with you before, it really is. Okay, so we're not quite at the end of the lesson yet, despite um, having learned five new words. So we've learned bravado, we have learned infinitesimal, we have learned panacea, travesty and fervid. But I've got another challenge for you, okay? I'd like you to see if you could use two of the words that we've learned today in one sentence. This is gonna require some thinking power because the definitions aren't going to be up on the board, just the words. And um, it's up to you to see if you can bring their meanings together in a sentence. So we're going to start with panacea and travesty. So can you use those two words together in a sentence? It's gonna be really tricky to do. Um, have a go and like I said if you are on catch up you can pause the video spend some time on it and come back to the rest of the lesson play <laughs> Steve says, it, Steve might be your name or it might be your adult's name. Steve says, my panacea is not a travesty. Lara's asking after Bertie. Bertie is 
He's asleep on the floor in the kitchen. Lovely. Uh, Rebbe, that's fantastic. COVID is a travesty and requires a global panacea. Fantastic. Good work. Pause. Okay. Uh, I'm hugely impressed to see the quality of answers coming through in the live chat. And I can't wait to log back on this evening and have a look at the um, comments on the video to see what those of you who are watching on catch up or who are not using the live chat have come up with. I'm, even I learn something sometimes. So next we're going to try and include fervid and bravado in the same sentence. This one I would say is slightly easier because there is some shared meaning between um, the two words. Let's see how you get on. Good luck. Play. <laughs> Okay, some really interesting ones um, coming through in the live chat. Lots of Harry Potter themed ones again. Um, but just a little reminder for you that... I've got lots of pieces of paper on here now. Uh, fervid is um, an adjective and bravado is a noun. So you need to think very carefully about where you would put them in your sentence. So you've come up with sentences where you're talking along the right lines and you've got the right meanings, but you'd need to structure your sentence so that you're using an adjective and a noun in the correct place. But otherwise, brilliant work. So we are pretty much at the end of the lesson. I know some of you will have to dash off because you might have other live learning opportunities at 11.30. Um, but I do have a challenge for you every day. So that's instead of the, that replaces the task sheets that we were using in English Live last summer. And today's challenge. Now, I'm loving to I'm loving seeing so many of your challenges pop up on the Holly's English Hub Facebook group. It's lovely to see. I do um, drop in some comments where I can um, to congratulate you on your hard work. Today's challenge is to write a short biography, I'll talk about a biography in a moment, that uses all of today's new vocabulary. And if you really want to stretch yourself, you could try and use these three words too. You're going to probably need to look them up and practice using them in sentences. Unilateral, quintessential, and indiscriminate. So there's three more words for you. And uh, see if you could integrate all of today's words into a biography. So a biography is a uh, summary of your life. Okay, what has happened in your life stage by stage, step by step. You can write in lots of detail. You can write a shorter summary. Um, but the challenge is to try somehow to use all of the words that we've covered in today's lesson. Now, even though you're writing about yourself in your biography, um, the words don't necessarily they can apply to experiences in your life, other people in your life. Um, you may even choose to write a biography about somebody else. It doesn't have to be about you. And you can Google um, how to write a biography if you need any help with that. Okay. So, okay. let's see if we've got any more shout outs. Hmm. I don't know that one. <laughs> 
Well, of course you wouldn't. Play. There we go, we've got some music. So, first of all, big shout out to Mummy English, who's doing a great job with all of the um, shout outs. Hello to Sylvie, who is eight in Broughton. Hello to Mishka in Bromley and Navia, who is 10 today. Happy birthday and thanks for tuning in on your birthday. That's, that's awesome. Good work. <laughs> right. We are at the end of the lesson today. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for my live comprehension storytelling of Jekyll and Hyde with some questions thrown in for you. And then, of course, on Friday, we have the weekly spellathon and all of my other weekly classes and workshops are all available on Eventbrite if you wanted to book tickets to those. Have a lovely afternoon. Good luck with your learning. Good luck with your challenge. And I will see you tomorrow at 11 a.m.